Hello everybody, Al Berg and Lola here. This is the Doggy Style Podcast, episode 24. And it's a beautiful day today in Plainview, New York. And we're, I'm working from home today. Had a doctor's appointment uh, today and uh, hopefully everything will be okay. Nothing, nothing major anyway. So we got a lot to talk about now. Actually, we don't. <laughs> One funny thing that happened to me is that um, a, a guy I work with asked me a question, and uh, I didn't really know the answer. I had no idea what he was talking about. He used an acronym SAG, and I had to ask him what it was. But the funny thing was that I was afraid to ask somebody who might know the answer. Because if I asked that person, that person would have contact, probably copied my boss on it, and I felt like I would get in trouble. So instead, I copied my boss, and I went back and forth, and I finally did it, and, and my expectations were met. There was a stupid comment from him. I don't know, he just always seems to have some stupid comment. Uh, so I'm going to have to figure out how he wants to deal with these issues. So whenever I get a request from somebody, we have to come up with a better method of, of dealing with it because currently, um, I don't like the way he's, I don't like the way he handles it. He doesn't seem to like what I do. So today I'm going to go through some of my uh, chapter titles from Key Principles for Success. Um, I did listen to a, a short video of 30 minutes by Ray Dalio, who wrote the book Principles, and coincidentally the same time I wrote mine. So it's just a freaking coincidence, or who knows? Who knows why? Uh, but I've been working on this book for a while, so I'll say he copied me. No, I don't know. He had some interesting stuff, I think. I think it's certainly worth looking at. Part of me thought my book was better. I mean, his was very, his was more vague information. Where I think mine's more specific, uh, more technique uh, to pick from. Yeah, so the first first item I have on my list of 1,300, and basically I have a, f a function that keeps lists and also allows me to randomly select it. So it's shuffle. Actually, it's just shuffle. So I shuffled the list, and the first thing that came up was unique value proposition. And I'm not sure who coined this, UVP, but the uniqueness of your offer is very important. Um, whether it's yourself personally, what skills, what unique skills do you bring? Uh, I don't really have much on this one. I know also there's a guy, Doug Hall, who talks about dramatic dif difference when it comes to selling things. So you really want to, you want to identify how your product or service is dramatically different from everybody else's. And you want to find ways to, to make it different. Not different in a bad way, but you have some something unique um, that gives your gives your service value where others don't have it. I don't have much more on that one, um, but uh, I will include a link to Google search term, but something worth looking up. Unique value proposition. The next one, I believe, is from Scott Adams, and it says, new skills doubles your odds of success. So it gets into what he, I think he calls it a skill stack, 
where one skill gives you something, but when you add additional skills to that, it can double double your chances. So if you're so so if you're a writer and you learn programming, you've you've increased you've increased it in a certain way. You come in here. Wait a second. Okay, go play. Oi. <laughs> So we're at the park. We made it to the park. This is a beautiful day, really beautiful day. Uh, <laughs> um, I skipped one. I'm going to just open it up, which I've written some stuff. Interaction with your new boss. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything here. I was keeping a... A diary of my interactions with the new boss but I stopped doing it so w one thing I was looking to do is is um, the the su success alarm should be able to do this so that's a, a function it might have is to every day I might want to record a note and collect a daily diary of something oh, I got a sneeze <coughs> excuse me <coughs> Wait. Freshly cut grass just made me sneeze. Yeah, so this is interesting that I started it, but I never fin I never continued it. So the whole idea would be I can set an alarm on a daily basis at some time, and during that alarm I would get some prompt, which would automatically add to a to a dated list. So, so it's more the idea and the fact that I stopped it didn't help me. And I could do something on, say, the stock market, history, what it feels like to be living in the 20, wait, what it feels like to be living in this time, which is 2018. So um, Lowell and I are, are sitting in the shade right now. I'm gonna take a nice picture of her. What you doing, Booby? You're hot, huh? It's hot out here for doggies, right? You gonna look at me? Where's your face? Show me that beautiful face. Where's that beautiful? Look at me. Hey, over here. Hey, Lola. <whistles> hey, look at me. Over here. Come here. That's a good girl. Look. Oh, over here. Come on. Come on. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. Oh, that's a lot of teeth. <sighs> You're a beautiful girl. You're going to kiss my nose? <laughs> stay there. Stay there. Stay. Good girl. You're a beautiful doggy. Mwah. So I have the best doggy. What are you doing? She's crawling all over me. What are you doing, booby? You just want to stay in the sit, relax in the shade? Yes, I think you do. I think you just want to... Oh, you're all dirty. You're all dirty. How did you get so dirty? Just relax. Come on. Wait. wait you're on my... Wait, give me your paw. Okay. Okay. What's up? What are you doing? Why are you breathing so heavy? You want to speak into the microphone? <laughs> She's licking my nose now. You look, are you licking my microphone? Don't bite my nose. Did I? Did you just get hit by the microphone? That's Lola breathing if you hear that panting. You're so cutie pie. Oh, you're so beautiful. She loves to be scratched on her back. So where were, where were we, Lola? Where, what were we talking about? You see something? What do you see? What were we talking about? I forgot. I was talking about um, a, 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 an alarm that could track time. What do you think of that? Wait. Hello. Hi. What's up? 5.30. 5.30, okay. Thank you. At which vet? The one on the Meadow Hill Road. Okay, you got it. The other one should give her care. Okay. Okay, bye. Oh. So we got a 5.30 appointment. <laughs> Oi. Ooh. Okay, so I don't know if that call came through on my recorder, so we have a 5.30 vet appointment. I'm going to go to my alarm system, which is on successalarm.com. And I go to alarms, I do set alarms. 
Boy, you're really making a lot of noise. The time is 5.30 p.m. And I, I'm going to get uh, early warnings every every 50, uh, 30 minutes before 15, so I'll get two more alarms. And the message you're going to say, vet at 5.30. Okay, so I put that in, and, and that's really it. That's really it. And just me and Lola just sitting down, relaxing on a beautiful day. Looks some of the school buses are letting out now, so it might get crowded at the park. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Yeah, so I just got out of my where I was, so I'm going to go back to key principles uh, randomly again. And the first one I got is don't fall in love with an idea or a stock. So, I, I mean, I guess basically it's just that just because you, it's your idea or a stock that you like, sometimes you could be blinded to what you should really do. In certain cases, you need to stop working on an idea or sell a stock. Uh, you might you might think that it was a great stock and something changed, or maybe your idea changed, or maybe the market changed. So you always want to reevaluate. Ma matter of fact, I have the idea that you should on every day think about what I'm working on. Is it still, does it still make sense? Does it still make sense, Lola? Does it still make sense for me to do Excel training today? Is, is that an old technology? So, something to think about. I have a uh, article on how to run meetings, which I'll open for a second. Uh, and I don't have much there, but basically I did run meetings, these uh, pretty major meetings. And I'm going to say the important thing for a meeting is preparation, which I have a whole chapter on preparation. So um, meetings will go well if you prepare for them, and they'll suck if you don't prepare for them, basically. And you can really only learn how to run meetings by running meetings. Uh, some things I don't like is uh, the the host saying asking for attendance. That's pretty annoying. I don't, I don't think that's necessary. It's a waste of time. Everybody's got to hear, you know, waste money, time in the meeting. I'm throwing treats right now to Lola. Yeah, so I have shorter is better. So yeah, so keep them 30 minutes. I mean, I don't know. Do you really ever need a meeting longer than 30 minutes? You got to keep the meeting moving. And you do have to take notes and follow up. Otherwise, things won't happen. So somebody does have to take notes. It's not necessarily should be the uh, meeting organizer. Hi there. Okay. Okay, so that's so much for that. Um, I have something called writing bad sentences. So just... Uh, just an idea to write, you know, when you write, you write a sentence and you write a sentence and you should find ways to shorten it <laughs> or improve it. Uh, what are the key concepts you're doing? It's right here. Somewhere here. You got it? Where is it? It's over here somewhere. There, you got it. Good girl. Good girl. What a good girl. Yeah, this one's not that interesting. Uh, next one I have is do more of the good stuff and less of the bad stuff. And this is from, looks like it's from a blog from Dilbert. It's also attached to it. I don't know if I can, oh, can open it. <laughs> Funny enough, so this, the next one is when to help and when not to help. 
which I was just working on and it came up randomly. I'll see, I'll read it and see how it sounds, which I can't see it, so. Um, people ask me for help all the time. And if it's not reciprocal, why should I help them? One reason is you may need them to help you, I have a typo there, you at some future time. I think the expression is paying it forward. It could be advantageous to not help help coworkers. If your review is based on the performance of your coworkers, then any time you help them, you lower your chances you lower your chance for success. It might also take time away from reaching goals you want to reach. Not helping people can come with repercussions. Look for strategies and look for strategies other use on you. I don't know, I don't remember, ask so and so. Come here, where are you going? Get over here. Here. Come here. Come on. We're going this way. Okay, there's three pieces. Three pieces. That's one. That's two. One more. One more. Where's the other one? Three pieces. Come on. It could be advantageous to help them by helping someone you reduce by helping someone you reduce their effectiveness they need you and might not develop knowledge they could develop so yes yeah, so sometimes when you help some somebody this happened to me when i was learning java come on i uh i had a crutch where i asked people for help and you kind of didn't i didn't learn it as well I, oh shit what i do with my Oh, I put it down over there. Come on, we gotta go get your leash. <laughs> I put a leash down and then take it with me. Come on. That would be bad if I lost it. Come on. I have a dog and no leash. I guess I could get it home. But uh, I know where I put it. Oh, that was weird. Leave it alone. I think she's eating goose poop. You eating goose poop? Come on. Um, the next item I have is track your time to determine how you, how you, how to spend, how to speed it up. So. If you don't track your time, you really can't know how long something takes, and then you can't, you kind of need a baseline. You won't know how to improve it. You won't know what to do, and you won't know if what you did actually fixed something or sped it up. So you do, I would say, track your time on tasks. And this is something I've been trying to do because a lot of companies, I know a lot of jobs, my current job, I have to track my time. Oi, did you eat too much? Come on, let's go home. It's a little hot out, and we and I have to go. Uh, I have to get back to work. Come on. Hmm. I have next one. I have is failures. <laughs> so I've actually been fired from one, two, three, four jobs. Wow. My uh, the first job I got fired from was my first job out of school. And uh, I would say that that failure helped me in a way because I was actually fired for, and it's, a inter it's not an interesting story, but it's a story I'll tell you. I was fired because um, we used to meet in the, the boss's house on Fridays. Come on, come on, come. Doggy's getting tired. Come on, come here. I'm gonna put a leash back on. Stay here, stay, wait, where are you going? Okay, come on, let's go. So, um, on Fridays, and so on one Friday, I was supposed to give a talk to a new worker about some subject, and I don't recall what it was. And it turns out that that Thursday, I worked really late fixing something, and I didn't have a chance to prepare um, for the talk. So Friday morning came, and I went to the boss's house, and he was going over the itinerary, and he goes, and Scott, you're going to discuss so-and-so. And I said, uh... I, you know, I can't, I can't, his name was Marv, I can't Marv because um, I worked late and I had time to prepare. He said, well, you're doing it anyway. And, and with that, I said, no, I'm not. 
And so and that, that was really it. That got me fired by, uh, by just saying, you know, ju just saying that. It was a small company. And he asked me to leave. And then basically the next, I guess the next day, or maybe it was over the weekend, it was over the weekend, he gave me a term, he terminated me. But I had a month, I had to give him a month notice and he had to give me a month notice. So I stayed there for an extra month. And during that month, he kind of liked the work I was doing, but uh, I wound up getting a new, another job. And uh, I, lear I learned a valuable lesson. You got to be careful what you say to the boss. I mean, it could really, it can get you fired and it got me fired. So um, if the boss says jump, I think the, the real answer is how high? Of course, unless they're telling you to do something illegal or outside your morals and uh, you know, that's different. Um, then I worked for another company and uh, I went on vacation and when I came back, uh, I got laid off. They, clo they actually closed the whole department. So, you know, nothing that I could have done, but they did keep one person. Okay. Oh, somebody's hot. My dog's very hot, her tongue's hanging out. It is a hot day for her. It almost feels like, like beginning of summer. So night, it must be almost 70, 80 degrees. Um, another job I also got laid off from, but that was, you know, I don't know, they were downsizing and I was one of the guys and I was learning Java at the time and maybe didn't pick it up quick enough. Um, or maybe I was old, I, I, who knows, who knows the reasons. Um, oh yeah, and then an early job. I didn't really get laid off, but they said they were going to close our department. But I had had happened to get a new job, so I never really got laid off from it. Um, I've been divorced, so that was kind of a failure. So these, I don't know if I said that, but these are my failures. Um, I got divorced, and you know the question could be why. Uh, I don't know if this was my fault. I know my wife didn't, you know, we got married pretty young, so I would say the only fault could be that I got married too young. There might be some other reasons that I won't go into right now. Um, <laughs> the next one is the dot-com bubble. I lost a lot of money in the stock market during the uh, 90s, late 90s. Um, it was invest investing in very risky stocks and a lot of them went down to zero. I mean, I lost a lot of money, probably $60,000 easily. Uh, not great. So I have I learned something from that episode is that investing is gambling and you don't really want, and even I invested in a few index funds. Like there was a B2B index, so there's a few index funds I invested in and they both, they were, they it kind of it was a scam because the stock prices would say $300. So say you took a bunch of worthless Bitcoin companies and then you put them together, you bought shares and then you sold it at $50. So it was just a way to scam them. They all went out of business basically. I mean, worthless. <laughs> the next one is I would say that since the big crash, I've been in cash, and so that was kind of a failure that I failed to make up all the money um, that I could have could have gotten a return on. So I consider that a failure. Um, I had some real estate where I, I th I'm going to say in 1984, bought some real estate for 65,000. I bought a condo, a co-op, in Scarsdale. New York, and then I sold it uh, 84. So I sold it in 97, I think, for a loss. So I held real estate for 13 years, lost money on it, sold it for, I think, 60,000. So that was a pretty big, that was a loss. At one time, the real estate was probably worth 120,000. So learned from that that real estate is not a guarantee either. Depends on the market, depends on interest rates, depends on a lot of things. Um, then uh, another big one is I invested in a guy named Hussman, John Hussman. I don't, I'm not sure how I found him, but he was basically give a lot of commentary on, we're gonna cross, come here, there's a car coming. Let's go here. He was giving a lot of commentary on the internet and I thought it was really interesting. I thought it was really good, 
but uh, I put a, a, a pretty large amount with him, and uh, basically he's lose, lost money every year. I still own his uh, his fund to this day. He ran, runs it like a hedge fund, which means he's long stocks but short the market, so you're making a return. In theory, you're not supposed to lose money when the market goes down, but of course, he just keeps losing money. Uh, and one of the things I do need to do is to get out of that. Um, and that's something I hear I give advice about getting rid of things. And the question is, would I buy his his fund today? I don't know. It's a good question. Probably not. Um... I got kicked off of a hockey team, like a like a bunch of guys playing together, and they kicked me off the team. It felt terrible that uh, some guys didn't want me on the hockey team. Um, oh, I got a couple of hedge funds uh, weren't doing well, so I started with two of them, and they were doing great. And then at some point, they weren't doing well anymore, so they they also laid me off. I mean, they didn't lay me off. They asked, both, both asked me to, to look for a new job, which I did. Hmm. It's kind of depressing. Um, another thing is I was a consultant with, uh, with a guy. We were both consultants. And they put us both on salary at the same time. We were about the same. Maybe he was a little bit better in, in SQL and I was a little bit better in some other technology. But he became a vice president and I got a title of AVP. So that kind of pissed me off, uh, you know, kind of a failure. But and to this day, I probably my my title is low because of that. So it's important what title you get. I don't know how you would even find this. So it's all depressing. So one thing is that you should learn. So there are some lessons there, and you know, so I, I've learned some lessons there. Um, the next one I have is take action versus more info. And this will be the last one I do today uh, as the dog is laying down outside. <laughs> I don't really have anything much for this, but this is from the guy who writes Success Magazine, Daryl something. He's got a funny quote, something like, you already know all that you need to succeed. You don't need any more info. If all you needed was more info, everybody with an internet connection would have a a big house, a Porsche, and something else. It's kind of a nice saying. So, so I mean, basically, he's saying is that you don't have to keep. You have to do. You do have to take action. Um, next one is no longer needed, which I have the acronym L N L N, uh, and I'll just read it. Uh, get rid of things that aren't needed. It could be tasks, friends, books, wires, files, projects, or any junk you've accumulated. I have a lot of wires. Um, this habit can help you counter the too many TM problem. You have too many things. If you suffer from the too many problem for every one thing you bring into your life, make it a habit to get rid of two two items now i said i should do this with books I, it's really hard it's really hard i don't know you know i don't know how to how to get that habit going but that's it seems like it would work if you can easily replace what you have like taking a book out of the library then sell it give it away or throw it out so it's interesting so i have these books sitting on my bookshelf that I'm not reading anyway, or in boxes, and and I guess the the question is, can I just easily get that out of the library if I wanted it, or can I buy it again? So just the space it's taking up. So and then I have a list of what to get rid of. Get rid of habits, files. I do have a lot of computer files, books, videos, records, toys, collections, projects, ideas, notes, stocks. Gifts you don't want, friends that waste your time, activities you no longer want to do, anger, interesting, that are no longer needed. Set up a time each day to declutter. It could be every other day or some other time frame, but make sure to turn it into a habit. 
So it's interesting to have a declutter habit just every day at a certain time. I kind of like that. I should set up a, again, the I should uh, set up a time to declutter, maybe half hour every day. It's good to get your momentum going so you can slowly get rid of things that may be holding you back, wasting your time and taking away your focus from what's important. Some questions that can help are, will I be able to find this item if needed? Why am I holding on to this? Can I look at it and extract its value? So I'm thinking with a book, can I extract uh, rules or something from the book? Do successful people have this problem? Are you a hoarder? Um, it's hard to move on when you're holding on to the past. So, you know, the chapter could use some work, but uh, some interesting things there for me. Um, and I'll just do one more. Ask questions in process, it says. And it's not coming up. Oh, here it goes. Okay, and it's just a bunch of, it's just a list of a bunch of things. Ask what if questions, magic question. Um, the five WH, which is the who, what, where, why, when, and how. Questions to ask people you meet. Questions to ask on a job interview. Questions to figure out your goals. Questions to help make a decision. Questions to help you solve a problem. Ask, is this task making me money or wasting my time? Oh, I like that one. Hmm. Like what I'm doing right now. So we're a little bit cursive because maybe doing this podcast is wasting my time. What are the odds? Ask for the sale. What went wrong? What happened? So anyway, that's all I have for today. Alberg and Lola, Lola's sitting on the grass panting. I'll, I'll take a picture of her so you could see, see it. If I don't get the wire in the way. Anyway, everybody have a great day and we'll see you, we'll see you again soon.